Good evening. At 6.30, we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Mr. Iser. Oh, boy. I won the lottery. Okay. This evening, I have several things to discuss. Item number one, I have an a &R plan for Berkum construction uh, that I emailed to Jim and Bill. I hope you got it so that you, you can share it. That was on Crystal Lane. Crystal Lane, yes. Uh, let me see what I can find here. It was interesting. You drew the 100 by 100 box in the larger lot, but I assume it also fits in the smaller. Yeah. I, I yeah. What, what's happening there, Mark, is I'm enlarging the smaller lot. So the, yep. the box fit in the original lot. So I'm just showing that it will fit in the revised lot. So what's happening there is there was a lot four and a revised lot five and Berkum's daughter lives on what is shown as revised lot four. And he's building a house, I believe for himself on re what's called re-revised lot five. And for whatever reason, he wanted to give 50 feet of property to lot four. And uh, the way, the way I did it, I did not change anybody's frontage um, and the, the box fits in both lots. So there's enough frontage, there's enough area, there's enough width. The box fits in both lots. So everything complies um, plain and simple, really. Okay. Any questions? Entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Are there any drainage issues on any of this? Uh, as far as what, Mark? I don't know. I, I, I'm not familiar with Crystal Lane. And I'm yeah, I don't think there are any drainage issues. The, the road's got catch basins and whatnot in it. Uh, there's farmland all around it. There, I don't believe there are any problems. I think it's fine. I was just doing my due diligence. Okay. You want to go ahead with the vote, uh, Jim? Yep, we got a motion and a second. Any all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so Jim, when when would be a good time to meet up with you to get that signed? Um probably tomorrow evening sometime. All right, I'll so. see. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Uh, I got the select board meet tomorrow night, so I gotta be there for that. But if be... not, then uh, probably Friday evening or the okay. weekend. All right, I'll get a hold of you at some point. I'll text you and okay. we can get together. Yeah. That's All right. right. Thank you. Item number two: um, the Parmars have a concern about their the sign for the motel on Russell Street at two thirty seven. It is in the area that the state is going to take when they widen Route 9. And so they're concerned about the fact that it is pre-existing non-conforming. And if it has to be torn down, how is that going to impact their ability to rebuild and where? Which one is Tooth? That, that the old, uh, that's one next to you? Yes. Okay. I would assume you could move it back and still be non-conforming would be my opinion. Uh, so if we, if we keep it, if we push it, I'll, I'll have, I'll measure where it is now in relation to the right-of-way line. And then when the new right-of-way line is created, I'll make sure it's no closer than that. Does that make sense? That would be, that would, that's my two cents. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. I mean, they're, they're losing it, but it's not like they're tearing it down or anything. They're, they're, oh under duress but yeah the state's created a hardship for them so i don't think there should be any problem right that's rest of the board yep that makes sense have it have it as far back from the new right-of-way line as it is from the current right-of-way line yeah. yeah i would just say yeah let's just pay attention to sight lines so yep. yeah okay nope. all right i will uh make sure i get that measured before they tear it down okay and just to, on that, that that same note, Randy, talk to uh, them and find out. I don't remember when we approved 
their um, site plan for the new plan. hotel. Yeah. And just make sure that if it gets close to the three years, that they request an extension before the three years is up. Okay. I, I'll talk to them tomorrow about the sign and I'll remind them of that. Yeah. Because when I talked to them last during the winter, they thought it was up. They, or he, he thought it was two years. And I says, no, it's three years now. He's well, I think the three years will bring us into this year sometime. So just remind him. Okay. I don't remember the, I don't remember the date of approval, but it's probably getting close to the three years. Okay. And, and is, uh, is there any extension because of the COVID? Not automatic. Okay. Just, I mean, all you're going to do is request an extension in writing for a year or something and we can grant it. That's not a big deal. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure they know that. All right. So we're good with that. All right. Uh, last item, Kevin Michelson, his property on Pine Hill road, his repair shop. He wants to add another bay to one of his buildings and he is maxed out with parking. I've told him that he can't do anything without TDR. So uh, my question is, I'm assuming I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to file for a, a brand new site plan approval for this? Yes. I don't okay. think he can get TDR. He's not on uh, Russell Street. His frontage is on Pine Hill, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. So it is, does that, uh, preclude him from TDR? I believe so. Okay, that I was not aware of. So let me... That'll make it easy, if that's uh, the case. Let me see. Let me go to the bylaw. Okay. What was the uh, address, Randy? 8 Pine Hill. You said that was Kevin? Kevin Michelson, yes. Okay, let's see. Farmland preservation, eligibility. I thought it was just that it was if it was in the business business zone, but maybe I'm wrong. No, it was uh, a little more narrowly written, which is going to be something we're going to have to take up again later tonight. Um, in here somewhere okay the receiving district consists of all lots within the business and industrial zones with frontage on route 9 mill valley road or north maple street okay well that settles that um all right, so I've got one other question I just thought of. I, somebody contacted me about 231 Russell Street, which is the other side of me towards Sam's. Uh, it's the, uh, currently the 5050 studio, started out as a dance studio. And that lot goes from Russell Street back to Nashua Road. And apparently somebody's looking at buying it and they want to expand something. I'm not sure yet. I want to be able to advise them correctly. Now, I know that Nashua, this, this lot is wholly in the business zone, but might be part of Nashua Road, might not be in the business zone. So that being the case, they cannot access over residential into business, correct? Correct. That is correct. Okay. But so they can push as far back as possible business-wise. They just cannot use Nashua Road to access it. Meaning Correct. they could put a building back far enough where they would 
satisfy all the zoning, but they still just couldn't access it from the other road. That is correct. That, that is not in the bylaw. That is a Supreme Judicial Court case. Okay. All right. That is all I have for questions right now. Thank you very much. Okay. So next up we have uh, Mark Filkowski. Yeah, Mike. Or Mike. Well, it's uh Did, uh, did you get a chance to email the signage out to everybody? I did. Okay. See, I'm looking at uh, putting in a smoothie shop at the old Patrick and Company, 102 Russell Street, apartment one. Okay. If anyone didn't get it, do you want me to put this up on the screen? Maybe just briefly, Bill. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so there will be no exterior alterations. Correct. What was the uh, street address again? 102 Russell Street. Okay. You know the history of that building? The old uh, Carbers. Before that, Elmwood. No. The Elmwood Hotel. Okay. I used I used to live on West Street. We used to sneak down there at night and buy hamburgers at eleven o'clock at night. <laughs> I couldn't believe there were eighty spaces, but I see there's a lot in the back. Yeah, there's more parking in the back. So then, so we have the first, the long picture, a bit of a close up, and a detail of the sign itself. Um, does that get the full 64 or does, I mean, obviously it's not anywhere near that, or do you aggregate the whole building? I don't know how that. Just the uh, first floor. So Jim can explain it maybe better than I can, but in a multi-tenant building, each tenant gets 40 square feet. 40 square feet. Okay. And that appears to be well within. Well, yeah. I have no objections. Uh, do you have illumination plans? Is there... Lighting? No. What are your hours of business? Uh, possibly six to five, six to three. The weekends would be uh, maybe eight to two, and nine to one. And um... Mr. Filkowski has signed the acknowledgement that that's not what I wanted. Uh, that it, that um, hmm. seems to want to bring up odd things. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> he has signed the waiver, acknowledging that he knows what a waiver of site plan approval is. So I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval. I would second. And approve the sign. And approve sign. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Good luck. You're welcome. Good luck.
So I have uh, Judy's iPad, which I think is related to Mr. Michelson. So. Um, Hello, gentlemen. It's John Rogers. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I was just sitting in to see how we're doing tonight. So we have received a request from Mr. Michelson, which I think is this. Yes, we have a request from Mr. Michelson uh, for a further continuance to October 17. And I'll make a motion to continue to 10, 17, 21 at the request of the applicant. Second that. Somebody second that? I did. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Randy, just for the record, you expect to be ready on 10, 17 to go forward with this. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, just uh, you can... You let all your neighbors go know, please. And I will let Mr. Pill know that we expect this to actually happen on 1017. Okay. So are you talking to me about the neighbors or are you talking to? No, I let, I will, I will let the, uh, who is it that was on there? Because I can't see Bill's got the screen all with the, with the letter. Yep. I'll, I'll stop sharing. Okay. That was, uh, oh, Judy's like that. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I will let Mr. Pill know that we expect they actually, move forward with this on 1017. So um, we can act according, you can act accordingly. So I just have a question, please. So why, why do we, why does he want the, the uh, Randy to be present, please? Pardon? Why did Mr. Michelson ask for Randy to be present, please? I'll answer that, Jimmy. Okay. He, he wants me to present his uh, site plan and, uh, to the planning board. He doesn't feel comfortable doing it himself. Okay. Um, and has he uh, passed the requirements of the Board of Health as well, Randy? Not at this point. That's one of the reasons why we're waiting till October. I see. Are there any other requirements that he needs to? Well, we uh, really aren't taking this up. We're continuing right. it today. We just continued it. That's it. I'm so we, we just, it wasn't on the agenda as official public hearing. A continuance, so we just be, we we are discontinuing it, sir. So we're not trying to cut you off, but we don't want to get into a violation of the open meeting law. Oh, I understand that, and thank you also for making a revision on the agenda since it was not posted uh, this evening. Um, but but I do have a copy of that revision. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Dwyer. If you want to phone, give Brandy a phone call and ask him those questions on the phone. You're free to do that. Thank you so much, Jim. <laughs> I, I just don't want to get in trouble for doing this. That's all. I, but you can I talk, appreciate that. Why, no why don't you can talk to him all you want. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, I believe that most of the rest of the people are here for the uh, public hearings, but uh, I do have Susan Young. I don't know if you are part of one of the development groups or have a question for the planning board. I believe she's gone. I guess so. Okay. Okay. Um, just so we take these up and not waste, have people sitting around for too long. Is anybody here for the Hadley Garage? Please turn your screens on besides Jeff and Tom and stuff like that. Are there any butters for the um, Hadley Garage. Are there anybody here for the Ideal Movers? Uh, yes, I think we've got a bit of our team here tonight. This is Bucky Sparkle. Okay, be, be, this, I'm talking about a Butters and stuff. A Butters, thank you. Okay, well. So um, the, the butter for both projects were notified. So I guess we'll just take up any order that, that Mr. Dwyer has them for the we'll do the Hadley Garage for it. This is a continuation. Pardon? 
Right. Somebody scream something out? I think you heard when him shutting his his, his uh, voice off. Okay. We'll just continue with the Hadley Garage first. This is a continuation of the Hadley Garage at uh, 99, 97 Russell Street to redevelop the old Nibala property into uh, basically a multi-tenant use. Would that be basically correct? Yeah, yes. And uh, the state, I did talk to the state. Um, what was his name? Jay Ely, probably. Jay, yes. Mm -hmm. And he said that the they approved the curb cuts for the letter and that they do not have an issue with the drainage directly into Route 9. Um, he said he talked to his foreman and his supervisors that work in the streets. And these are his basically his comments. I don't want a guy can't repeat word for word what he told me. I can't remember. But basically, because the drainage goes into the street, there are catch basins very nearby. There has never been a problem with any kind of excessive ponding or slippery when it freezes there, that the drainage has been working. So the drainage is good. They don't mind the sheet flow into the street. So it's their highway and that's they're good. So we're back to the regular site plan approval stuff. Mr. Squire. Yes. Well, I, I, Tom, do you uh, yeah, yeah. do you want to take this up? Sure, Bill. Do you want to um, allow me to share my screen? Then I can bring up the site plan. Sure. And just nothing's really changed, but it probably is good to refresh everybody's memory for you know what we're looking to do here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Can everybody see my screen? You should be seeing 97 uh, Russell Street yep. property okay. here. Okay. Um, so for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson over in Amherst here on behalf of Building Grounds and its application for a site plan approval for a multi-tenant property, um, 97 uh, Russell Street here in Hadley. And so the, the, the plan really hasn't changed since the last time that that we were here. Uh, I know one of the big concerns was obviously DOT approval, you know, making sure that we did in fact have the approval for the curb cuts, uh, which we do. So there will remain three curb cuts. You'll see that this is full access, entrance and exit. This is exit only. And then this one is undefined. So, so full access. Um, you'll see that you know, Jeff Squire, who's also here uh, from Berkshire Design, uh, has done a nice job laying out the, the parking on the site. Um, you've got parking spaces over here, parking spaces here, parking spaces here, and then a uh, travel lane here, and then some employee parking tucked around the other side of the building. Um, there are no um, footprint changes to, to this building. There, there has been some work done uh, on the exterior of it, I think, you know, beautification um, of that building. One of the other things to note is on the southerly side of the property is that garage, which went over the property line. And, and you know, I think Mark Krause, who's here from uh, Building Grounds, heard you, heard the neighbors, and has agreed to take that garage down. So even though we think it's probably grandfathered for zoning and likely for adverse possession, it was one of those uh, things to be a, a good neighbor to do what the planning board has asked. Um and so I think it also helps with site beautification. So, you know, in a nutshell, this is what you've got. There are 49 parking spaces. 10 of them are attributed to the Steve Lewis space, uh, six of them uh, to be determined for a future tenant. And I think uh, that's likely to be the, the ambulance, uh, action ambulance, I believe. Um, you've got Esalon Coffee using two and then a spray booth, spray booth using four. So that leaves about 27 spaces. I don't know if anybody's been out there uh, lately. We, we heard you after the last meeting. You know, Mark, we had conversations about um, when he felt comfortable doing something on this site, understanding that DOT was looking at it. And so he felt like between a rock and a hard place where if he went and acted, he might be screwing the pooch for DOT. And then obviously at our last hearing, I think it was July 20th, we heard- Oh, was that again? Screwing the pooch? I've never heard that before. 
you know, I'm and I as I was saying it, I was wondering where I heard it before and if it was in the right context. So <laughs> did you learn that in law school? <laughs> That's a, yes. Yeah. Okay. My student. I think it's a, I think it's a technical term because the, I I know it too. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so. So if you've been out there uh, recently, you, you probably hopefully would have seen some signs that that Mark had put out there, some additional signs at the common, no parking. He's he's posted signs on the inside of the restaurant um, directing patrons to where to park. Uh, they have lined this just temporarily, and, and I'll probably show if I can bring up. If you can see, they've they've lined the parking uh, area, even though, you know, when I take this away, you'll see that where those vehicles are, that's not what it will ultimately be. Um, but I think, you know, Mark's made an effort. We, we had a pretty substantial discussion after the last hearing of things that he could do to try to keep folks, even though, you know, we're talking about the parking. Oh boy. We're talking about, let me see what the heck I'm there. Um, even though we're talking about the property next door, he still felt, you know, because there's going to be overflow parking from Esalon here, he wanted to address some of the parking concerns that he heard over at Esalon for parking on the common. And so, you know, we gave the analogy last time, I think Randy was on, he, he talked about when somebody at 50-50 fitness parks on his property, he's the one that needs to say something. And, you know, I don't know I mean, to me, it's it's the town. It's probably the select board posting or or towing or saying something about parking on the common. Um, Mark's doing his part on his property, and then he's also trying to get folks to be parking in this area over here. So, you know, I don't know if we want to talk about the, if you have any questions on this site plan. Um, I know that we wanted to continue this hearing so we could give the abutters time to actually you know, jump in if they had anything to say. I think maybe their absence is, is pretty telling. So we're happy to yeah. answer any questions you have. You know, we can talk about all of the specific things Mark has done in between last hearing and, and this, but you know, I think this is a good design. There's sufficient parking on this site to take the overflow. You know, ultimately, the, part, the, the sign that he has currently showing overflow is going, he's having a new sign made that's larger that ultimately with approval is going to direct folks over here. So you know, all in all, we, we think it's a really good solution. Tom, can you talk about the existing and proposed lighting for the parking area? Yeah, maybe, Jeff, if you can hop in. I, I don't know that much is changing on site. I don't think we're proposing any um, uh, pole lights here. I think there's uh, a few lights along the street, and I know we've got some lights on the building. But, but Jeff, if you want to expand a little. Yeah, so there's, um, I'm, I'm trying to refresh my memory as well, but I don't think, um, I don't think we're proposing any new site lights. Most of the lighting is, is, you know, from, um, you know, from the building and, um, you know, isn't going to be changing. All of that is, is sort of decorative gooseneck lighting and, and downward facing. So, uh, you know, nothing that will, will cause glare onto, onto, um, you know, onto route nine and, and vehicles passing. Um, you know, again, this this is this is a lot that will be primarily be used during the day. So, um, the as, as Mark can speak to, I don't think the the Esalon is currently open it, it for dinner. So, um, you know, sort of dawn to dusk are the hours that we would need, um, you know, safety and uh, safe lighting provided. And and um, so, in that case, I don't think, um, yeah, we're not we're not proposing anything new at this point. And if there are issues. Um that I think we we would identify and then either come back with a proposed lighting plan, asking for additional lighting if, if that's what the board would want, but nothing. And there's, um, there's additional lighting on route. There's additional lighting on route nine as well, that you know, certainly provides ambient light for, for this site. Yeah. So, so can you access the parking next to the Hadley garage on the West side by driving in on West street and driving through that parking lot and just keep going and going and going? It's yeah, I mean, the, the, the drive aisles, the, the extent of pavement is not going to change other than modifying some of the, you know, the, the grass islands along Route 9 that you can see now. There's certainly, um, you know, they don't promote traffic between the two. Um, but that's yeah, that uh, we're not cutting off that access. OK, that's good. 
A couple of que- one, one question on hours. What are you going to be the hours of the uh, the old the, at ninety seven Russell Street? Mark, do you know um, Steve Lewis Subaru? Um, I mean, Esalon will certainly be you know no pat not later than five o'clock. Uh, but I don't know the spray booth, and I don't know the the ambulance. And Mark, Wait, you're wrong. My, my, my only comment is last. A year ago, when we were looking at the drainage, Mr. Zagladnik and I were out there at dark. And approximately where you show the two new little tiny islands to the west side of the building, you're right where the arrow is? Yeah. That area at night, I mean, I'm not one to promote lighting, believe me. However, from a safety and security point of view, that area is pretty dark. Um, okay. If it wasn't for the car headlights driving down Route Nine and illuminating the parking lot, mm. you would have it was it was pretty tough to see stuff at night out there. So I think you're going to have to put some kind of lighting, either along the back, illuminating towards the north, or in those islands, illuminating that area. Mm. Okay. Um, you might I mean you don't need to do it right now. I'm not trying to design it here, but you may want to take a good look at it when it's dark out especially like on a rainy night and you'll see what I'm talking about that. I think you may have to do something there. Okay. Sure. Jeff, something to just put a pin in and and let's pay attention to, even if it's, you know, a solar powered light, so we don't have to run any underground conduit um, or attached to the building and make sure that it, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, however, I'm, I'm not, again, when I'm, I'm not, not trying to design, I'm just telling you approximately the area that seems to be pretty, pretty uh, dark. Okay. Pretty, yeah. Thanks. Any other questions for the board on this particular item? Oh, just a little correction uh, to Tom Reedy. Tom, uh, the planning board's concern, obviously, is a little bit of the parking on the common, but the main concern is the fact that the violation of the site plan, it was an overflow. You're supposed to contain your own, your parking on site. And that is the main objection. It's not, it has nothing to do with the, with the town towing or putting up signs. It's his responsibility to maintain the parking for his business on site. And it just so happens that what was a, temporary addition to us as presented became a permanent addition. And that's where the square footage of the site that is presently occupied by Echelon has increased. Therefore, the parking is a little tight. Understood. I can I can appreciate the position, Joe. Yeah. And I know that the last meeting there was comments about, well, it's difficult to control, it's difficult to do this, the town has to cooperate. Maybe. Basically what it is, it's a Esalon problem. They're Esalon customers. And I appreciate the signs. I, I saw them out there. Um, it is definitely an improvement. But when I went by today, there was still half a dozen cars on the common and there was empty spots in the parking lot. So I'm going to give you a couple, I'll give you two choices here. We can, I'm willing to approve the parking lot improvements, but hold off on approving the building right now of 97 Russell Street, get the parking lot up to snuff, Get your customers contained on your property. That means off of the common. Give you a time to do that. Let's say six to eight months. If the parking is off the common, you'll have approval for the building and you're free to move on and keep them off of the common. If you don't want to go with that, um, I wouldn't approve this at all. And you'd have to go to court to um, appeal it if you wanted to, and that's gonna be a disaster on both of us. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not making a threat here. I'm just saying that I want the parking contained on your property. No, and, and, and Jim, I'm, we understand it. And as you can hopefully appreciate, there's a lot of competing factors here. 
I don't think Mark likes um, getting put through the ringer. Every time he, he comes in front of the board to say, you've got to clean up this parking on the common. Um, and so I think he'd like to see it solved. I don't, I mean, he's trying to run a business after coming out of COVID. And, and so his mind is on running a good business um, to, to add the parking for the common on top of that. Not that he can't do it, but I would ask, I guess, for some leniency because I think he's taking some of the steps that he needs to. Frankly, if if the town were to sign the common, no parking and enforce it, that's a very simple way. You know, physical impediments are a very efficient way to prevent people from doing certain things. So yeah, now, you, now, you take, now you're taking the parking and putting it on a town responsibility. Exactly right. That's not the point here. The point is the violation of the site plan. But, yeah. So, I mean, I, I haven't done enough research to understand if every site plan that you guys have ever approved have had, you know, so Target, when you've given a variance for Target, if, if somebody parks in the adjacent parking lot at Target, they're technically not on the, the, not on the same lot because Target is its own lot as they need it to have. Are they in violation of their site plan? I mean, no, we just... no, because there's so many cross easements within Target that they can anybody can park anywhere in that parking lot. You the the you can talk to your former cohort Peter McConnell. I think the agreement between Target and the mall was pages upon pages of I don't even want to call it. To... So if we if we were to get from the select board the ability to park here. Would that? No, 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 no. This is. I mean, it's select, the same thing, select, right? Select, select. Tom Brady, Tom Brady is throwing up a straw man, trying to put Target in the same. Yeah. This is different. Select, selectmen have no authority to overrule the planning board on his own uh, on his own bylaw. They're completely Agreed. separate items. Agreed. But I'm talking about property ownership, and if they want to appropriate the the, the public ways to allow parking on a public street. I mean, isn't isn't that within their purview? And then no, similar to the target the, analogy, if the, we were to go and get a license from the select board to allow parking there, I mean, what's the difference? I'm not, Joe, I'm not saying we're going to, right? Because I want to take a step back and say part of the other considerations, you know, to not give an approval for six to eight months to this building when you've got an ambulance company. And I think the fire chief may be here to speak in favor of allowing the ambulance company to be cited at this site now, you know, when you've got other operators in there and Tim Nyhart gave them building permits to, to move forward and to, to occupy these. Then get the parking off with a comment tomorrow. <sighs> Jimmy, can I talk please when I get a chance? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know yeah. at one point, Mr. The owner said, well, what do I have to do? Stand out there and direct the cars? Maybe you do. I don't know. I'm not going to, we're not here to, to describe or detail how to do it. You're in violation of site plan approval to put the burden on any other entity is not right. It is the burden of the original applicant. They are in violation of site plan approval of contained parking on their property. They need to correct this, not somebody else. I'm not, I don't care to listen. Well, it's very difficult to do. Maybe. It may be very difficult to do, but it's a self-created issue. Nobody else created this problem. The town didn't take anything on them. The state didn't take anything on them. They were compensated for anything else. I remember when the stuff went through. They were all, they're, they're parking in the front yard setback because of that. That's, that was allowed. So they have parking available between the two sites now. Yes, Mr. Reiser. Okay, so... If I understand the regulations for site plan, it states that you have to have two times your building business use in square footage for parking, correct? That, yeah, that's so correct. That, that, that would make one comply with the bylaw, that is right? Correct. Okay, so I believe there's more than double the parking on that site for the building and even the addition to the building. I don't think there is, Randy. Well, there well, okay, I'll, let, let, let Randy finish. Let Randy finish. So, I mean, I've got some calculations. Unfortunately, I can't access it from this foolish iPad I'm on. 
Uh, but anyhow, <clears throat> the building right now is about, let's say, 2,500 square feet. So that means they need 5,000 square feet of parking, which he, I will guarantee you there's more than that there. And mm -hmm. I'll be happy to send you my drawing when I get the, the right way to do it. So that being said, because he's got enough parking on site, I don't see how he's violating the zoning bylaw. Now, granted, he's busier than any business in this town. And so people want to park on the common, but he is not encouraging them to do that. He is trying his best to not have them do that. And he and Tom Reedy and I have talked about this. And in this day and age, if you expect him or some of his employees to go out and stand on the road and tell people they can't park there, somebody's going to get run over, somebody's going to get punched, somebody's going to get shot. So I don't think that's fair. He may have the... His site plan says he has to have the parking contained on site. Under normal conditions and proper prop parking layout, you're probably right. However, if you look at that parking lot, especially the upper one, the cars are parked along the outside perimeter. There is a massive area between the cars where there's nothing. Right. So the park, he, although he may have proper parking area, it may not be properly laid out. It is, Jimmy. I've looked, okay. I've, I've so looked not, at I'm, it. I'm, 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 just making I'm not here to argue with Randy. Hey, Randy okay? as, I, far I, as, I as far as the opinion of going to be going to get shot, going to get hurt, I don't want to even hear that at our meetings. I want to hear facts. The fact is he's in violation. That's the fact. He has parking available in the other area to make this comply, to get the parking and keep it on his property. You can sit here and argue with me all that you want, that it's this, it's this, it's this. The fact is, it's not contained on his property for whatever reason. How he gets them off is his business. Randy. Uh yes. I, I beg to differ a little bit. Do you know where the property line is? And uh, the property line is beyond the sidewalk. So he, you are probably calculating some of the town property that he's using for parking now anyways. I am not doing that, Joe. My uh, job is to understand where property lines are. Well, uh, I, I, yeah, that, 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 I, that, please, that. please, Joe, don't. Don't Joe, go Joe, there. Joe. Well, if you don't if you don't understand the risks of being attacked in Hadley for being told where to park, I'm starting to wonder. Yeah, it what where the lines are. I mean, I'm not here to argue about square footage or anything else. The the lot the fact is the parking is not contained on the property like it's supposed to be. That's the bottom line for whatever reason, and it needs to be contained on the property. That is my opinion, and I don't see, I'm not ready to approve this until I see it happen. I will give him partial approvals for different things, but not for the entire site. If he can get it done properly, quickly, I'm more than willing to approve and may change my mind sooner. A third alternative is... Uh we still have the ability to have, have him post the bond. And if he's not complying. That's just a disaster. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That, but just I, I, I would not vote in favor of a bond. Okay. Because I, trying, to, trying to pull the bond and enforce it and everything else puts a heck of a burden on the town treasurer. I, okay. Uh, would it be possible to, at the east end of your, your primary lot, as people are exiting, to have some kind of a sign that says, couldn't find parking? Please don't park on the common. Turn around. We have excess parking on the other side of the building, which is a which is a shorter walk and out of you know and out of vehicular traffic lanes. It just just that would show that you're trying to tell them 
it's not easier to go over there, turn your vehicle around and go, because you know, it, it's behind them now. They've yeah, come I through, mean, they don't see it, and it's natural. They're going to want to park the first place they find. Of, yeah, I mean, yes, of, of course, we could put that up. There's only so much that we can control from the folks who are coming from the north, from the south. You know, if they come up Bay Road, come up West Street and figure I'm going to because I'm going to continue to go north. I'm pulling off the common or somebody who's just stopping in and then get it on the bike and head into the to the river. You know, I can I understand that there's a problem. I understand where the leverage lies. Jimmy, I think your your second solution, I mean, that doesn't make sense for anybody. You you deny a, a business, a restaurant business that is actually successful after COVID is going to look terrible for the board in the town. I'm not sure that you guys care about it, frankly, but it's going to be terrible. You know what lawsuits are like. I know what lawsuits are like. And it just doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Like that doesn't solve the problem. It just puts, wastes people's money. Uh, only the lawyers benefit, which is certainly a waste of the money. I, so... I, I, I don't want to deny anything here. I want to work reasonably, at least as far as the planning board is concerned, to get the parking off of the common. So then, so then why don't we, you know, because Steve Lewis is in there, Spray Booth is, is using it, uh, Esalon is parked. The only thing that's not in there is the action ambulance, which, I mean, I think that you'll probably hear from your fire chief it's something that he's going to want. So why not have us come back? I don't know, more frequently. Um, you know, and we're happy to, you know, that I'm, I'm pretty open with communication. Why don't we try to solve this? And whether it's, you know, I talk to Mark, we talk to Randy, we figure out, is this something, uh, how do, how do we do it? You know, how do we do it, but also to allow us to go forward? Cause it's somewhat of a catch 22 chicken in the egg. I think that allowing the parking and then allowing the ambulance is necessary, but then obviously it takes away, you know, your plan one to, to have that something hanging over Mark's head for the solution. So is there something less than preventing the occupancy of the building, especially by the ambulance that could still make you feel comfortable and whether it's monthly check-ins um, you know, if we don't do it by, you know, six months, and there's only, again, there's only so much that we can control of other people's behavior. And we can, we can put forward our best effort. I mean, the signs was the first step. I've got, an, I've got a suggestion for you, Tom and Mark. What if you, I mean, I don't, t tell me why you couldn't do this. There are, I'm seeing right in front of the store, there's a curb cut. And then there's two more going west, um, which I think you said those first two, one in one right in front of the store and the next one west are in out. What if you made those all out only? You made them come in off the common, made them so they turn onto the common and then enter this parking lot from the east. If they don't find a space, now they continue over to the other parking lot. So, oh, Marty, I think the problem is if they're going east, they come out and they're going to want to park. I'm not, you know. okay. Mark, uh, I appreciate what you're trying to do. I shouldn't design. Yeah. We, we don't design on the fly. Right. Right. And we don't want to have anyone come right. back to us later and say, well, you told us to do it this way. Right. Um, we're looking at what they have presented. Right. Um, personally, um, I don't think that the actual use of the 97 Russell Street structure uh, needs to be held up. I mean, we've already allowed, we've given uh, waivers to allow a few people to go in there. Uh, maybe we should have had this discussion when the first waiver was asked for, but um, that was also a good Hadley business that um, uh, contributes to the town. So, uh, I, I think all in all, the uses proposed for the 97 Russell structure will be less intense than the uses that were, than its use as a commercial garage back in the day. Uh, I, so I, putting that aside for the moment, going over to the parking part, it, it, it's a little more complicated. And Randy, you may recall that the, when we initially gave them site plan approval, their parking satisfied the requirements of site plan approval. 
when they put up the addition, uh, put on the addition, that uh, that skewed it really close to the line. And when they set up garden dining, that pushed them over the line. But at the time, the bylaw did not prohibit or did not count outside areas used for your business purpose as part of your business floor area. We subsequently amended to make that change. So they would not have been allowed to expand outside if that part of the bylaw had been in effect. That went in as a direct result of what they have done. Having said that, they do have additional space on their property. They could add more parking on the Esalon parcel. Now, it w- would it cut into their outdoor dining area? Sure would. But, um, you know, these are the trade To just clarify one thing Jim said, and maybe Joe said it too, the bylaw does not specifically say that you have to contain all of your parking on your site. It says you have to have two square feet of parking for each square foot of business floor area, which is a huge uh, amount of parking. And uh, when you apply it to the mall, I think I have only once in 30 or 40 years not been able to find a parking space at Mountain Farms Mall um, or a Hampshire Mall. Um, well, when you scale it down to a business like is uh, a subject for a variance, but they don't have a business may have to find ways to put more parking in. Um, and uh, if that means giving up some of the outdoor dining area, that is the going to be a trade-off, but that they're going to have to make. We're going to have to look at. Um, I guess I would I would be willing to proceed to the approval of the site plan for the reuse of the Hadley Garage. Um, I. I'm not quite sure. I I would like to see more effort on the part of Esalon management to help its customers stay off the common. Uh, If that requires more enforcement, uh, you know, the police certainly willing to enforce, but they are not out looking for trouble. Um, I don't think, management really wants to encourage a ticket blitz. Um, I think encouraging your patrons to park uh, on property you control is a lot better business strategy, but then I'm not running your business. Uh, Anyway, I'm, I'm not uncomfortable with approving site redesign as shown. Um, I understand it isn't a guarantee that it'll keep traffic off the common, but it is. We have to enlist police support to do do ticket blitzes on Sundays. I guess we'll, that's what we'll have to do. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because I'm not sure what Mark's business model is, but I don't think six cars parking on the common at any given point in, of his business being open is making or breaking the business. Yeah, I mean, what I, I'm not in favor, I personally, my opinion, am not in favor of granting site plan approval on the site right now. Um, I understand that and I, I don't disagree that giving the partial approval is not a good business choice either. Maybe what we do is we continue this for one month and we see what kind of improvement can be made 
of reducing the property, reducing, if not eliminating the parking on the common, however they go about doing it. That may be a better solution. That's a good I'll make that motion. I would before, like to, before we move on, I, I feel like we've been overly focused on, on the commons. And I think that we're, we're so focused there that we're missing some very important parts of our, our responsibility here. And that's safety. I think that the, having all those curb cuts on route nine open to cars coming in off of a, what, what, what is that? 35 miles an hour there, 40. Mm. And then, and then suggesting that they the cars are going to go within that site, go West over to the West parking lot while cars are coming in off of route nine. I think that we have, I think that they should look at their design in terms of safety because Incoming, tra incoming traffic there is not safe for anyone trying to go west within the site. And it would discourage me from you know, having a, a head on from someone coming off of Route 9 eastbound. I'm, I'm, I am, I'm surprised that we haven't made more of an issue about, I would say, going from the west, if that's curb cut one, and then two, I'd say three, which is the 33 foot cut. And the next one, the 33 foot cut, I don't think that that benefits anyone in any way. And I understand it's there, but I think it's not, I think it's, it's, it's unsafe right there. That I think if you, if you close that off, there's a little bit more of a safe lane. So within, I, I, I just like to make a site. I, I meant just I'd like to make a couple of comments just to how we arrived at, at these okay, curb cuts and working with the state. Um, you know, obviously the one on the on the uh, westernmost side provides in and out access to the entire parking lot. Okay. It's not intended that you know people would necessarily turn into this lot and then drive all the way east into the parking lot um, on on Esalon's property. This is you know for people driving. Right. Um, you know, and and the the central curb cut really is to provide access coming out of those two garage bays. And again, if, if action ambulance, you know, takes a place that, that, that turning ability out of those garage bays because of the building's proximity to the, to the highway, um, you know, we just, that needs to be maintained as such. And the, the one on the, the, the next one to the East, again, their truck access and deliveries come into, you know, that Esalon portion of the of the 97 Russell. And that's, that's their turning movement is, is coming in there. They, they need that space to be able to, to navigate. Um, and, um, and, and that was, that was part of the approval process with mm -hmm. DOT. Okay. And, and, and th those are good points, Jeff. I mean, maybe there's some way to discourage the truck cross traffic from the two garage door, but the, the, the out bay, if you would, right there, just to the west of that, somehow discourage that back and forth movement where the two arrows go, left and right. And, and again, those, those are really intended for people that can't find parking in that front lot of Esalon to be able to get across to the well, front of the site and then true. into this yeah, overflow lot. Yeah, that's true. You, 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 you do need the, the cross traffic between the lots. You're right. You're right. So we, we, I mean, the intent of the arrows was to, uh, the sign was to make that very clear so that people don't have to get back out onto Route 9. Yeah. and then come back into the site. Yeah, no, you're right. That, that, I, I didn't think of that one. You're right. That, though they are needed. Mark. And just from a design, oh, I mean, the only other thing okay. I'd like to just comment on quickly is just the parking layout at, at the Esalon site. There's, there's a, you know, again, as everybody knows, there's a number of factors that, that come into play. You know, among them here are the proximity of, you know, the state right away, but then also the need for fire lanes and, and access coming in and out of that lot. You can see it, especially in the lot, um, you know, closest to Route 9, that those spaces are angled because we really don't have, you know, you need 60 feet typically from curb to curb with head-in parking for, um, you know, for, for a safe safe parking lot like we've got on, on the 97 parcel. But we just don't have that, you know, ability on that, on this site, given all the setbacks and the other constraints. So, you know, I, I just speaking to, to the layout of that, we have looked at, you know, ways in which we could try to maximize parking, but just the configuration of the lot and the other constraints just don't allow a very 
you know, conducive layout to more efficient parking. It's, you know, it's one of these classic examples of a lot and a, and a parking layout that was designed before anybody was really designing parking lots. And that's, and that's why I think we're here. Because you're saying you have enough parking by, by saying you have parking on, on the west side. But if they can't functionally get there, then, you, then you're not using it. And that's why we're having this whole issue with the common. Because you've got inadequate parking on the east. And, that's, and you're saying, I think we've, we've all agreed, no one wants to go across, go westbound on that site and go right in front of the building and right in front of the garage and get over to the excess parking. So the excess parking is, is it's like a red herring. You've got it over there, but it's only, it only functions on paper where you say, you know, let's say I'm coming from Northampton and I turn into to that first cut. But I think anyone marketing would say, you're not thinking unless you're purposefully going to S line, you're not thinking of that. Are you, you're not thinking until you see it further on. I think most people probably come in right at Esalon at, at the building entrance. And so this, I just don't see it's going to be used other than for the Hadley garage, because if you can't get to it safely, it's going to discourage. And we're going to have this ongoing issue with parking on, on the East side. But, but Mark, I think yes, I would respectfully yeah, disagree in that if you're, if you turn into that lot on the East, coming from the commons turn into that lot along um along route nine and there is no parking i i can't guarantee you but i would highly predict that somebody would not turn out onto route nine take a left just to turn immediately left at the next possible you know opportunity if there's a safe way with very little or no traffic across the front of the building and clearly defined lanes and and a parking layout that that, you know, that combined with signage would, would make that, you know, very clear and safe. But Jeff, I don't think it's a very safe westbound lane within the site because you've got all that traffic entering off of Route 9. Because if you're going westbound within the property, you're supposed to be on the north side because that's the way we drive in this country. And that puts you right in harm's way of someone entering. So it seems like it's really this, Mark. Yeah, I mean, I think that whole, I mean, you kind of said it before, like, you know, you know I'm sorry, but that's all we can do because this is a site. And, I'm, and I'm, you know, my thought is, if your site doesn't work, that's not our problem. Right. If it's not safe, we yeah. don't, we're here to make sure that you have a safe site that, it serves its needs. Otherwise, why are we here? So I'm kind of thinking that part of it is if you build it, they will come. The, um, there has been minimal effort to make that parking area attractive. Um, I think many people may not even be aware that it's there. Agree. Uh, I think that if there is more of an effort to make it attractive, there will be more use. Uh, what I've what I've seen it most of the time when I go by is that people stop at the um, the westerly stretch of West Street. People, I, I don't see people turning into Esalon at the driveway in front of Esalon. They are making that turn further east at uh, you know, where the arrow is just off the screen. And then coming into one of the two Esalon parking lots from West Street. And I think that if, uh, if there were clear signage directing them across the front of the Hadley Garage, and remember the Hadley Garage was not necessarily receptive to overflow parking from Esalon when it was in under prior management. Uh, they had their own needs for the parking at that point. Uh, I, I think it can work. I think it needs some signage. It needs some, uh, some uh, educational efforts and it needs to be, you know, right now it, it, it's a uh, basically a dirt and gravel sloping lot 
and it needs to be graded uh, somewhat. It needs to be uh, lined, and I think it is doable. But I would also ask, I, I'm frankly, I'm more interested in the question, and I guess I would turn to uh, Chief Spanknable for this. If Action Ambulance were there, how often would an ambulance be going out? Uh, how Do we know how often ambulances go out from the current location? I've never noticed, uh, I'm on Route 9 frequently, I've never noticed an ambulance departing that location. So I just wonder if we have any data on that. I could, <clears throat> excuse me, I could request data for you. Um, the Action Ambulance is currently uh, it's up here normally from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And it's set up, sent up here as a backup if our primary ambulance is out on a call, our advanced level of care. So this site would be used to fulfill that, that need. And then the ambulance also does go out. It, it kind of jumps between here and Holyoke. So it tends to go out and do transfer calls, or it could be called if they needed additional resources in Holyoke. Um, so, you know, today the, the ambulance is stationed at our station uh, because they don't have a site right now. So they're, we're, we're taking care of them at this point. However, you know, we're kind of running to a deadline here because uh, as it gets colder, it's, this ambulance needs to be inside. It needs to, um, it needs to be warm like our fire trucks. Um, so anyways, i that's that's the answer. I can try and get you some data if you'd like. Uh, I was going to request to make a comment on that. If if there's any chance the planning board can somehow figure out a way to allow this to happen, this is a critical resource for our area. Um, you know, this this ambulance it backs up ours. So if our ambulance is out on a call and has to go to Cooley Dickinson or Bay State, that's what's covering the next medical call coming in. That ambulance also goes if we have. Uh, motor vehicle accidents, if we have multiple ambulances there, we're still probably four, four months plus away from getting our ambulance up and going. We haven't received it from Northampton yet. So we have a bit of time before we're going to be able to do that. So this is a pretty important um, priority. And I don't know if I could make another comment, just taking my chief's helmet off, but putting on a, you know, a resident of, of having, I don't know if that's allowed or not. Absolutely. <clears throat> So, you know, I live on, I live on Bay Road. I drive down that road every day on, on to going to work um, or on the weekends. I can tell you that I have, um, I've worked with Mark for quite a long time. He's probably one of the most supportive people for all of our associations, police, fire, anything. Um, I guess what I'm asking is if there's a solution that we can assist with, you know, he lives in town too. He's committed to this community. I know he's been going through a real tough time and maybe we don't have a truly accurate picture because I, you know, during COVID his restaurant was pretty much closed up and the only opportunities were to eat outside. So we're seeing where, you know, we don't have people completely inside. Um, we didn't have them in for the, you know, for quite a while. I also would like to say that if you drive down West street, you can see there's a lot of folks that, yeah, maybe they're going in to pick up a coffee. Uh, from Eslon, but they're pulling their lawn chairs out and they're parking there and sitting on the common and drinking their coffee and hanging out there, which I think is probably considered one of the reasons why we have the common there. We have the asparagus festival. We have other, you know, other events where people use that. People park on the common when they're, you know, when they're going to work to pick corn in the morning. My son has, has worked, uh, worked, worked on the farm and sometimes they park on the common and walk across. We have bigger parties at people's houses on West street, people park on the common. I just, if there's a solution that we can do as, as a community, I'd be willing to do it as either the fire chief or as Mike Spain, able a resident of Hadley to help this, this, uh, this business owner with trying to figure out a way to get people not to park on there. Speaking, Jim, speaking of uh, Mike Spank, able, do we have a letter from him indicating that he's happy with the, uh, the setup that, Are there going to have to be any lights on Route 9 alerting people to Jim, stop uh, if the ambulance is coming out? Jim. Mike, just, uh, I was just wondering if we had a letter from uh, Chief no, Spicknable. He usually does. not, because the bylaw does not require a letter from the chief if he has no objections. Right. 
Okay, that's violence is consent. That's right. correct. And and the other thing too, I mean, uh, you know, the the owner of Echelon was rather dismissive when I said perhaps you could have the employees park in the uh, in the garage parking lot. And he said, well, it's very difficult to get employees, not that he would ask them to park there, but just rather dismissive. Like, uh, if I were in his position, I would try to cooperate a little bit more. We're, again, we're not trying to design. No, I, I, I agree. We're, we're, the bottom line is the parking has got to be contained on site. And... Mike Spank and Abel has a bunch of comments about it, and I appreciate his comments. However, and nobody's accusing, or nobody has ever said that these people are not good citizens. Never said, never mentioned that, anything like that. They're good, outstanding citizens. I have no doubt about that. However, it's in violation of the site plan approval, the original one dating back how many years? It is not a new one before COVID and after COVID. I'm going to stand by my comment. He has impetus for a bunch of reasons to get the parking off of the common and onto his site. I'm not going to sit here and approve it just because we need the ambulance. That's like, well, I'm going to do this. We have no, nothing to ensure that it's going to be done properly just because we approve site plan approval. So get the parking off the common, period. Um, if you want to continue it for a month to give them a chance to do something, I'm great for that. I don't you know. The partial approval probably is not a good idea. Okay. Could I make maybe, I mean, one suggestion is, and I think maybe two suggestions. Um, you know, I think Bill had a good point. If you build it, they will come. Getting folks off the common um, to an unfinished area, I mean, might work temporarily. But then when there is approval and the work is going to be done, you're somewhat disrupting like human flow. So just something to think about, because my suggestion is going to be, could the board allow Action Ambulance to occupy the property, but continue the site plan for a month so that at least we're back in a month, but Action Ambulance has the approval to go in there? Because I think we all know what we're talking about. I haven't heard one objection to Action Ambulance going here. I've heard some comments from Mark, maybe relative to looking at the curb cuts, talking a little bit more about it. I've heard some comments about parking on the common, signing it better, thinking about better enforcement mechanisms. But maybe that's a middle ground to get the ambulance where it needs to be. Um, yes, we can't make the balance of the site improvements, but we're going to try to get people over there anyways, and we'll be back in a month, hopefully, and you'll be able to have seen what has been done, what our proposed plans are, et cetera. Maybe a middle okay. ground. Well, in answer to Tom Reedy, this is number three concession. Number one, uh, Steve Subaru said they had a lot of recalls. It was urgent that he get us a place to uh, have overflow. So we gave him approval. And then there is a, another shop in there, a paint shop or something. That, that They didn't even come to us. And that went in there. And now you want number three concession. Uh, before site plan approval. Um, no, I'm, I'm not in favor of a temporary improvement for, for action ambulance. As Mr. Spank and Abel said, the cold weather comes along, he wants to put him undercover. This is August. We're months away from real cold weather. Get I, the parking onto the property. I personally will approve nothing less. I don't know. And how what if there is work, work to be done? What if there is work to be done inside the building to make it ready for the cold weather when Action Ambulance is going to hopefully occupy it? You know what I mean? So uh, allowing um, Tom Quinlan, who I think is also on, to issue a building permit to allow the modifications to the interior so that, you know, assuming, and if I'm you, what what's happening is, you know, this work's going to be done. It's probably embodied in a lease somewhere. The owner has more of an incentive to make sure that action ambulance actually comes in because this place is being fit out for them. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's something that you would all not, maybe action ambulance can't get in there, but at least the work can start in anticipation of them getting in there. 
you know, I don't know how long it's going to take to do the work. Okay. Understanding, I mean, lumber supply, material supply. If you've talked to any contractors, you know how long it's taking. I mean, you probably know how long it's taking. I, I, I don't know what's going to be, what be done to make, the, to make the building adequate for action ambulance. If, if the, if Mark get, if the Esalon gets the parking off of the common onto his property, I have no issue with approving everything. Okay. That's my bottom line. If he, if Mr. Quinlan gives him a temporary permit to proceed at his own risk, that's between the building inspector and the owner. If he doesn't get approval, he's just blown some, wasted some money. That's his money at risk. I would not uh, counter the building being proceeded at his own risk. There's a possibility he may not get approved. He's got to understand that if he doesn't get the parking addressed. But the site plan approval bylaw does not, it addresses the site plan. And um, this is an existing structure with no, uh, significant with no uh, exterior alterations proposed. Right. So, um, yeah, we don't care what goes on inside. Um, except as Jim says, if you're doing leasehold improvements and you can't carry out your end, that's a different matter, but you can evaluate that. Jim, uh, we have a hand raised. Okay, I, I can't see because the, 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 the screen. Joyce Chunglo. Joyce Chunglo. Oh. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, good evening. Um, can I just um, chime in for a second? I think the select board has not done their due diligence, I'm sorry to say, for the Echelon business, where we have only posted signs of not parking from, I believe it's 30 or 50 feet from one area to the end of the corner so that the bus would have uh, easier sight view going down West Street with the bus. Um, there is no other signage on the West Street Common about no parking. Um, I think that also needed to be taken into consideration here also. Um, if the select board has not done that, then that should be that should come before us so that we're not just um, uh, having Echelon take the blunt of the whole thing about this parking thing. If people don't see no parking signs, if I don't have no parking signs up there, there's no action by police or anybody else to do anything about that. We also see that on certain days or whatever, there are other people that actually <clears throat> park right on the common. So I'm just kind of wondering uh, if we could, uh, you know, co co chime in on this. I think the select board should, and I, you know, I would hope that you might agree with me on that. When's your next select board meeting, Joyce? Uh, tomorrow night. Okay. If if the so select board put, if the select board were to put up no parking signs more southerly on that side to help to to keep the parking off of the common, that would probably be a tremendous assistance to Esalon. Because mm -hmm. now he's got some support for the town. Because when this originally came up, the selectmen weren't interested in putting up parking except from the very corner. And they mm -hmm. said it was okay to park on the common. Um, if you're willing to put more parking signs further south, that would be wonderful. And that would help the applicant tremendously. Yeah. If you could put no parking signs for a longer distance than the, the distance to this parking make mm -hmm. this parking more attractive, um, that would probably go a long way towards solving the problem. Yes. Um, so in, in doing this, I don't wanna put them able to park in front of um, the other, uh, about the home homeowners on that side of the, of the road. Uh, and I certainly don't want them parking on the other side of the road either. So. Um, your suggestion would be to go how far back from where Eslon is? I know that we're not, we already have put up signs where they're not parking, you know, up until Weinzick's property there on the, if I was heading towards Bay Road, it would be on the right-hand side, which where all the homes are. 
Yeah. Um, so what would, what would you feel would be acceptable so that we could uh, help this process along? A uh, hundred yards? Happy to to our, to I, yards? Would I would probably say a hundred yards. A hundred yards. Okay. Yeah. And, and you, the sign, you may want, rather than putting up signs and making a putting signs up all over the place, you may want to simply put no parking on either side, only on the common side, rather than, because they put, I don't want to see a, a mass of no parking signs either, neither does anybody else. Right. Keep the place looking pretty clean. So right. say, no, said, parking no parking on either side. No parking yeah. on either side of this right. sign. Yeah. There so you, you put you put the sign, put up sign to say no parking on either side of the road or however the, the correct wording would be go over that with the maybe uh, Mike Mason. Yeah, I'm sure and, the, the police have a uh, I'm sure the police have input on this. Right. I mean, yeah, well, I certainly, we, I certainly would want to have the police chime in on that and fire and safety because their ambulances and things um, fire need to go down there also. Um, and yeah. that was the one reason for the the original signs that went up and no parking there so that there would be view access of a bus turning down there. But it also was for public safety also. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to, you know, bring this tomorrow night as as a, a public comment in our beginning of our meeting and uh, certainly get this moved along. So where we might be able to help you. So a hundred yards sounds good to yeah, you all. Yeah, it, is, is that your screen right there, Jeff or, or Tom? No, it's mine, Jim. What, Tom, do you know approximately for a hundred yards or 300 feet would be? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't think that's enough. I think you should have 200 yards. I tell you a hundred yards is a weak chip shot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think the idea is to make it to to rope off enough of the common so that it is easier to walk into the to walk to the overflow parking mm -hmm. and make it harder to you know you can actually see I, I would say probably to that telephone pole right there with the transformer yeah yeah. I don't know how far back there, but it seems it's, it, almost never do you see cars parked beyond that pole right there. I, I think occasionally you have on a good day, but I mean, that's only my viewing. But I'm willing to ask for signs to be put up um, as far back as we need them um, and make sure direction for Eslon is to have them parking their own parking lot over there. I think that's one of the basic reasons why they bought that property to begin with. And, you know, they're, they're, you know, I'm going to say this, they're good community people. They donate, they do things for the. And I'm, I'm willing to work with this and get those signs put up so that everybody is happy. So let me work on that with the select board. Okay. Thank you, Joyce. No. Let's move forward, not backwards. Yeah. Correct. And so are you saying 100 yards is sufficient enough or to the well, transformer? I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm no, saying to that's, that telephone that's more than the transformer, so how the, far that is. It, it okay. seems like the, the, the common itself is showing us how far people are parking routinely right. by the damage right. to it. That, that's, right. why I'm, that's why I'm saying that, that, that telephone pole with the transformer seems to be about as far back as they go. Okay. So, and otherwise, I would like to put um, no parking on either side of the street um, for the, let's see, would you consider, let me, is that the uh, north side of the south side of the common? Um, <laughs> is it the east, west, east side? Is it the east You're side? on the west east side of the east common. East and west side. I, I would think the parking should, should go on the east side of the I think you're going to need signs on both sides of the street. I do. So. I, uh, yeah, well, so. I, I absolutely do. And I certainly don't want yeah. to uh, infringe on homeowners properties either as, as they have infringed on the. So. When year is your next meeting so that I can at least bring it up to tomorrow. Which. We have, we have our next meeting in two weeks. Okay. And we do too. So we're usually back to back with you. All okay. right. 
Thanks for showing up, Joyce. You yeah. Yes. Actually, our, our, actually, our next, meeting, our next, next meeting, meeting is it's a three weeks. This is a three. Oh, three no, sorry, three weeks. Yeah, because this is a five Tuesday month. Our next meeting is a three weeks. So the September seventh. Right. Thank you, Bill. Okay, so that's. I think that's the same as ours that week too. The day after you're the day after Labor Day, and we're well, the next day. Is there any way to issue a site plan affirmative subject to the select board voting tomorrow to put signage up? No. 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 Okay. No. Just a thought. No, we've tried that before. Try to help you, Tom. Yeah. Good. I appreciate it. <laughs> we can just continue this for two weeks and see how it comes out. Three weeks. Yeah. Uh, Maybe three weeks. Jim, September could we get a read? Just continue with, to September seventh. Can we? Can we get a read for Action Ambulance? Is Is there any objection issue? I mean, understanding you're not going to approve them this evening. Work on the interior. Is there any objection or concern by the board of that use? Just to. If we're going to do the work, we at least would like to know that that might be the carrot at the end. Of the Outside our jurisdiction. Is, is it anticipated that Action Ambulance will be here for the foreseeable future? Well, I, 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 I don't know if Mike's still on or not, but I, I foresee that because we are in the process of obtaining another, uh, you know, an ambulance from Northampton that passed at town meeting. Um, it still takes a year to get everybody up to snuff and training and that's only for the bls and not als so just, it's just, it's a process it's not just, going to be right away just an observation mm -hmm. this particular site is right at the junction of route route nine and west street right so you've got a lot of action in the old place right at cross path road and uh you know the the uh route 47 veering off there whatever it is and so there are safety concerns, as Mark expressed earlier. Just something to think about. This is There's probably a lot, a lot of accidents at West Street and Route Nine. This is probably an easier place to access Route Nine than Cross Path Road is. Correct. Yeah. Correct. You know, I, I mean, you go over there. There's <laughs> getting. If it wasn't for the people, let if, if you tried to make Cross Path Road taking left turns onto uh, Route Nine going east. It would be a monster disaster. Yeah. People it's, still do it. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't say they didn't, but there's very few. But and, I'm, and I'm and I'm concerned because I see it when I come home at night from work that people are turning over and going up Cross Pass Road when they come over the bridge. Now you have a business there, a car dealership, and I'm wondering how many times that they're going to cross that double lane to go into that dealership. So, you know, we got a lot of things that we need to think about. We're probably going to have to need police more uh, uh, present on Route 9 and see how things go. And especially if school gets back in business um, this fall, it's going to be maybe even busier. So we, we'll wait and see. Um, but I'm certainly I'm going to be glad to take this to the select board tomorrow night and, and help you proceed with this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Thank Jim. you. Jim, I think Randy's trying to speak. Oh, yes. Mr. Oh. Isaac. The in light of what just been said about the proximity to Route Nine and better than Cross Path, most times the ambulance is leaving. It's going to be heading east, so this will be very much easier for it to get out on Route Nine and turn right, yeah. no crossing the traffic. Okay. That is true. I agree. Um, I will make okay. a motion to continue to September seven. Second. Okay. Before we make, before we vote on that, I just want to make sure that this parking is the only issue remaining. Nobody else has any concerns. Is that correct? No, I, I, I think Mark Dunn brings up some issues that we may want to explore a little bit about the parking, unless Mark gets satisfied uh, with the exits and the entrance. Well, I'm not supposed to design, but I would be thrilled and I would sign off if the second, third, and fourth curb cuts on Route 9 were exit only with the center one being only violated by trucks, d delivery trucks, if those are all designated and painted as exit only. You're saying, so Mark, so I'm clear. So this one, this yeah. one, and that one exit only? If they were all exit only, then I think it's a safer cut through. And then the trucks, delivery trucks, would we know they're going to violate that because they have to, however they yeah. maneuver. Yeah. Yeah. Well. 
I'm, I think the, the only the only word of caution I would like to throw out there is that those parking spaces that um, in the parking lot that face south in that front lot are angled spaces at, at Esalon. So yeah. really, the only way to get into them is by yeah. turning into that curb cut and into those spaces. You can't really can't those be restriped. I'm, I'm not in agreement with all three being in uh, exit only. I'm not sure that is a good solution. Um, well, I am, yeah, I don't even want the third one, but if we need it for the trucks. Well, again, we're, we're not designers. I know. Okay, so. I can't think of another case where we would ever allow that many curb cuts so close to each other. I understand that it's existing, but yeah. I, th I think it needs to be improved. DOT is, I mean, we've been, been through this process with DOT and they, you know, they acknowledge that it's not an ideal situation, but given the uses and the, the access that needs to be provided, that they're okay with those. So, and, and again, it's, this is all their jurisdiction, really. So, yeah, I guess okay. you'll, you'll get sued if someone gets hit. It's not us. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, just take a look at the lighting on a dark night. In the parking lot, you you may see what I'm talking about. You may want to do some improvements, even if it's uh, something off of the building. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion a second to continue to September 7th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we're back to, and actually most of the same players on this one, or at least a lot of the same. This is for the public hearing. I'll read the public hearing as it appeared in the Gazette. Hadley Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, August 17th, 2021, beginning at 6.45 p.m. Purpose of the hearing is to review for site plan approval, business use and aquifer, and erosion and sediment control, the application of ideal movers and storage to construct two storage buildings, a three-story 96,500 square foot building and a one-story 4,000 square foot building at 10 Mill Valley Road, zoned industrial. Plants and application are available on request to email at planning or visit the town clerk's office during normal business hours. And Zoom, Zoom, uh, Details are available when they're posted on the website, published twice in a Gazette, August 2nd and 9th. And with that, um, I guess Mr. Sparkle. Yes, yeah, so I finally found my moment. Uh, well, good evening. Um, I am, yes, Bucky Sparkle, the civil designer for this project and uh, the lead on a lot of the details for the Ideal Movers and Storage project. Uh, we also do have a few others here with us this evening to help us work through some of the details because I'm not an architect, I'm not a traffic engineer. Um, we do have a presentation this evening to cover the highlights of the application. So if it's possible for me to share my screen, it looks like that's already been, that's set, been up. set up. Yes, You're way ahead of me, Bill, thank you. So sharing there. Um, while I'll be doing a lot of the talking tonight, I think we're actually gonna have another opportunity to hear from Mr. Reedy who uh, I believe is going to do our opening for us. So, Tom, if that's possible, are you ready? Yeah, I mean, it's just pretty simple, and I think you probably took most of the thunder. So <laughs> I'm just going to introduce the team. Here it is. I mean, you guys know me. Um, I'll turn it back over to Bucky. Ben, fantastic work, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's, does that mean the clock is running, Tom? That's right. <laughs> Clock's always running around here. <laughs> uh, I'll, and to that, I will move through this as, as quickly as I can. If there are questions, feel free to interrupt me. Um, of course, at the end, we'll, we can have lots of discussion. I, I'm sure you've all taken an opportunity to look at the plans and application, the review from Berkshire Design. So um, this is just sort of a highlights reel, so to speak, just in visual. Um, I think most of you are aware that Ideal Movers and Storage has been um, in operating for more than a quarter century uh, since uh, overall, but in Hadley since 1997. Uh, the site is zoned for industrial 
as well as being in the aquifer protection overlay. We're looking at two buildings for storage. I'll go under those details later. Uh, the project should bring about three to five new jobs and the appropriate tax revenue with that. Um, doesn't won't take very much from the town in terms of services for water or other um, infrastructure. And uh, as you'll see in a bit and have seen on the application, um, it the, the primary building certainly doesn't look like a standard storage unit. Um, looking briefly at the existing conditions, uh, this is on South Maple Street. So over here is an aerial image where we have uh, the Walmart Plaza and the malls, uh, the Maple Farm Foods here with uh, South Maple Street, and this is the rail trail, these woods. Uh, right now in the red area, it's uh, an active farm, 4.2 acres owned by Gordon Smith. Um, it's a pretty flat area. We have a, a drainage ditch through here, which creates wetlands. So roughly the Northern third of the property is not available uh, to be disturbed. And from the street view, you can see uh, this is the area for the project pretty clear at this time. I'll talk about the plan and then I'll bring up the image. Uh, we're gonna occupy about two thirds of the property um, of the 4.2 acre, acres. We're gonna hit um, about 2.7. Uh, the first large building is a three story climate controlled facility. So this is um, in the primary uh, motive for this project. There is a little bit of room at the back of the site. So we're looking to do a one story garage style. So that would be very, very similar to the buildings that are already on Mill Valley. Um, of course, parking and lighting, uh, a compliant stormwater management system that's been vetted by Berkshire Design. It'll be a septic system out there, um, water, electric, et cetera, landscaping um, for um, both the bylaw and to soften the building. Uh, briefly, the office hours are going to be just the same as the Mill Valley site, which is Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, Saturday 8 to 4, not operating on Sundays. Uh, the gate is normally open only 12 hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, it is my understanding from uh, the applicant, Brent Bennis, that the um, every now and then somebody may have special circumstances where they would be given 24-7 access, um, but that I think is less than 1% of the tenancy. What does that look like? Well, Here's the project overall. And um, you can see in the, the northern third is the wetland and the do not disturb area. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so we can grab some of these details here. Um, we have the main buildings, the large one obviously in the center of the property, the smaller one-story garage unit over here. We have two drive approaches on the south is the entrance, enter only. It's one way traffic flow through the property. There will be lots of striping on the ground for arrows, as well as uh, plenty of signage around the site to direct people who are unfamiliar with the property, how to get around. All the parking encourages one-way movement as well. On the north side, we have the exit only, um, which is wide enough. And we have, we have pretty wide drive approaches because um, we're talking about moving trucks that are gonna be coming here. Normally box trucks, occasionally uh, tractor trailer semis. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, we do have to give them the, the elbow room that we, they need. There are two detention basins, uh, one near the front and one on the northern, northern eastern side of the property. These are both very shallow basins. We're talking like two feet uh, deep, so they're not significant. Uh, this blue area over here is um, not a basin per se, but a, a energy dissipator so that the water uh, flows out very smoothly and gently from the property because we know we have wetlands not too far away and we're trying to not hit them with the deluge. Uh, septic system would be in this back corner in all likelihood. Uh, we are currently working on the permits for the Board of Health and the Conservation Commission in conjunction with the project. The bright green areas, uh, we have the 15 foot landscape buffer along the road as well as uh, the landscaping that is gonna soften the northern side of the building. And uh, a little water main, water will come in. And I understand that there are still, uh, uh, I don't believe, I don't know if the town has heard from uh, the water department, if there have been comments, I haven't seen any comments. We are aware that the existing six inch, six inch pipe on South Maple Street very well may not be adequate, in which case we would then do whatever is needed to get the water connection on the north side of the rail. We understand there's a, a, a new 10 inch main up there. So our plan only shows going to the six inch 
And as soon as we get actual direction from the water department, we're just going to do what they tell us to do. So just to, uh, just to that question, point. Yes. Have you contacted the, the water department about that question? I, I have made multiple attempts, uh, three or four, and I've received right. silence. I have heard from the sewer department, which is where I actually have most of my information. And of course, they, you know, th those gentlemen know quite a bit about uh, the overall right. infrastructure. I, I don't have an answer on that yet. I really so was hoping that the, they would have replied to the application. The DPW director has been on vacation out of the country for the last two or three weeks. Oh, Jim, I so, did. Jim, I did call uh, the uh, water department or DPW uh, today, and uh, here's the breakdown. Yes, they sir. plan to uh, put in a larger water main on South Maple Street from uh, Route 9 to the bike path. And it would be appropriate, I think, if uh, they dovetail their operation because uh, they realize that this is going to require uh, a lot of sprinklers and the fact that the water main, as it extends south, uh, has sclerosis in it, and uh, there there's, was not significant uh, flow to fight the fire when uh, Wayne Goulet's garage burned down, the, the big garage. So, uh, mm -hmm. yes, it sounds like it's going to be on for either 22 or 23 for the extension of the water main from Russell street all the way to the bike path. And that's when you guys will just extend it under the bike path to your site. Um, we, we understand that municipal infrastructure is something that, you know, it's sort of a slow moving process. And, you know, when, whenever we can make that connection, we'll just go ahead and, and take care of it at that time. So thanks, thanks sure. for the input there, Joe. Joe. Um, hmm. I think oh, uh, we've, we've generally talked about uh, the picture here. I will say that the, the dash purple line that goes around the paved area is the proposed security fence. That's maybe the only feature that I didn't point out right here. And then um, I already talked a little bit about this. We do have 25 parking spaces, which is the amount required for a facility of this nature. It is one way flow. Um, and I actually covered most of this, but there is also a bike rack at the entrance. And of course, up at the Walmart Plaza, there's the closest PVPA um, bus <laughs> terminal. It's expected that any bicycle or bus um, use or uh, individuals taking these modes of transport to the site would really be staff, which is a pretty low number. Generally, people coming to a self-storage facility are coming in a vehicle, often a large vehicle. Um, but we do want to provide those for anybody who is able to use them. Um, briefly, I'm not going to go over all the dimensional requirements. We, we do meet all of the requirements here. Um, I, I did, if anybody noticed, I did have a typo in my minimum lot depth for my, my recent uh, submission. So uh, I will apologize if that caused any confusion there. And um, if anybody has questions, we can cover it more on that. And I'm hoping now that, although I can't see him up on my little screen, that Mark Dean from Dean Architects is here um, because he would be the best individual to talk about the, the building itself. Mark, are you there? Yep, I am here. Um, hope you can hear me okay. Um, so my name is Mark Dean. I'm principal at Dean Architects. Our office is located uh, outside of uh, the Buffalo, New York area. Um, we specialize in uh, self-storage facilities uh, across the country. Um, and uh, we're very happy to be working with Brent and his team uh, on this project. Um, as Bucky touched on, this is not your average uh, self-storage building. Um, it, uh, it's a, a combination uh, of a few materials that the owner is comfortable with. We're using brick, we're using stone, and we're using an exterior metal panel uh, for the majority uh, of the exterior. Along the front and the sides, kind of wrapping the corner, um, we have uh, windows that uh, allow you to sort of peek in and you see these what are actually faux uh, storage doors that corridor that's created will be internally lit um, so that those would light up at uh, at night. 
Um, there's a canopy uh, covering uh, the entrance area as people walk in. Um, and uh, along the side, uh, there's a uh, loading and unloading area uh, that's covered by uh, with a roof that's, uh, that formulates a, a par cochere. So, and that allows for full-size box trucks, full-size tractor trailers uh, can fit under that canopy uh, that allows them uh, sort of a dry place to uh, load and unload. Uh, maybe we'll go to the next uh, slide. These are the straight on elevations of the building. You can see the use of the different materials. You can kind of see in the, in the middle drawing how far back that loading and unloading area is uh, away from the street. And again, that would be behind um, the fence uh, that Bucky mentioned. The fence along the front of the building is an ornamental uh, iron fence uh, would give them you know, a, a little bit of privacy and some security back there. Security obviously being a key um, issue for uh, cell storage. As we look at the floor plan, uh, this is the first floor. Um, and you can see uh, as you come in, uh, in the front corner, there's a small retail uh, office area. Um, and this is where would somebody would come in to rent a unit. They also have some uh, retail display. There's also a couple of private offices behind this. Uh, and then effectively the rest of the building is uh, storage lockers. Uh, there's roughly 180 units per floor, which is giving us a total of close to uh, 550 units uh, total. Uh, building serviced by two elevators, two staircases. Um, everything about it is, is uh, going to be code compliant and uh, meets all the life safety codes. As we've mentioned, the building is also going to be fully sprinklered. Um, next slide uh, talks a little bit about the signage. I know there's been some question about that um, with regard to the elevation of the sign. So we, we've created the facade in the building and, and it, it sort of bumps up at the corners. It bumps up at the port -Cocher. It um, It gives it sort of an elevated appearance and, and sets it aside from the rest of the building. Theoretically, I, I guess this portion of the, is higher than the main roof of the building, but at the same time, the aesthetic from the road uh, would lead you to believe that that roof uh, continues at this higher level. Um, the signs we know are larger than uh, what are um, allowed by the ordinance, which I believe is 64 square feet. And uh, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 square feet, I think, times two, uh, because we have to find, pardon? 160. 160 square feet uh, times two. There's two signs. There's one on the front of the building, and there's one halfway down the side um, that's also above the Porco share. Um, as we uh, go to the next slide, uh, we we'll have, go back uh, up to the size of the signs. What are you going to do about the size of the signs? I believe that we are looking to get a waiver for the size of the sign. Of what? Uh, we're going to the Zoning Board of Appeals. You're asking for a variance, and you have no grounds for asking for You have for no variance. grounds for a variance. And the planning board, just if you get a variance... The planning board still does not have to approve those that signage just for your information. There's no nothing that says that you have that we have to approve it if you get a variance. I personally right. will not approve those signs. We feel that signs are very well in keeping with the, the size of the structure. Um, that a you're allowed six, you're allowed sixty four square feet of signage that is. Rejected by town meeting. We have no basis for giving you proportional signage. Gotcha. Well, I guess then uh, the signage we need as a team will we'll go back and look at and see how we we want to handle it. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. That's fine. Okay. 
That's fine. Uh, moving forward, um, we have a slide on uh, the exterior lighting fixtures. Uh, the parking area is lit uh, with standards that are 16 feet high. Uh, the port cochere is has down lighting under it. Uh, that's the that's the light fixture that's next to the parking lot standard. And then along the front of the building and in those recessed areas we talked about, uh, we have some small uh, down lights that are uh, recessed into the soffit. And then lastly showing here is a, a decorative fixture that would appear on either side of the entrance doors at both the main front entrance uh, as well as the back uh, loading dock uh, entrance area. And uh, so the next slide brings us to the photometric calculations. Uh, on average, we are between one and a half and three and a half uh, foot candles throughout the entire site. Obviously below, directly below each fixture, uh, it gets a little bit more intense. Um, the perimeter light fixtures, again, those are 16 foot poles. They're all equipped with cutoff shields uh, that limit the amount of light spread off the property. Um, and if you, if you look, take a closer look at the photometrics, in most cases, we have zero light spread uh, up to as little as 0.1 to 0.3 light spread off the property. On the lighting, will the interior be lit 24-7? Um, so all of the exterior lights are going to be on a time clock. It's going to be up to the owner, um, I believe, if they want to run 24-7. Or if, you know, it, it, generally we see these lit, you know, from dusk till 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock and then turn back on in the morning. Uh, we don't generally see them 24-7, but I but they haven't had that discussion with the owner. No, no, I'm, I'm talking the interior lights in the in the windows of the building itself, not the exterior. Right, those will all that'll all be connected uh, via time clock, so that those will be on at the same time that the site lighting is on. Okay, because my only concern there, you've got a tremendous amount of windows around the building, and while your parking lot lighting will certainly not infringe on anything, if the interior lighting is lit 24 hours or at long hours of the day, the lighting will shine through the windows and far and be uh, intrusive to anybody in the area. We had a similar problem when the Texas Roadhouse came in that they lit up the whole, I guess they call it the upper portion of the building. Yeah. We had a similar problem with uh, when Lowe's came in, they had lights in their greenhouse. And although they were contained within the greenhouse, the, the, through the windows of the greenhouse, you could see them from a half a mile away into the houses. So just yeah. be aware of that. So if you, if you zoom in, uh, Bucky, right on that um, uh, main entrance area, you'll see that we've actually added those lights on here for the photometric calculations. That is, I believe, the B fixture. Those lights are the lights that are inside um, that glassed in area so that those lights are contributing to these numbers on the photometric plan. So that's where you get the 7.5, 7.9. Right, yeah. and that's really just right at the entrance. You can see it kind of yeah. quickly diminishes as you go out into the parking lot. But unless those lights are directed downward, simply lighting the inside of the windows is going to shine out more horizontally than the parking lot lights and it will be seen across the street, et cetera. So just, I mean, until it's installed, we're not sure. But just be aware that once it's installed, if the lighting is shining too much through the wind, through the windows into the abutting properties, the neighbors across the street, which are hundreds of feet away, we may be asking you to tone it down. Well, one thing we can certainly do is we design that lighting um, we could put a dimmer switch on it that would easily allow them to turn those down, um, you know, without any problem. Yeah. And, and, and that, that, that I'm, 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 again, I'm not trying to design design here. I'm just trying to let you know that, you know, we, we did, we actually went back to Lowe's and to Texas Roadhouse after the stuff was installed. We raised the concern and they corrected everything. And it's a much better, much better. It alleviated a whole bunch of problems. I'm just giving you a heads up that depending how this comes out, we may be asking 
um, ideal mover is a similar issue, but we won't know until it's actually built. That's right. All. I think we can. I think we can build the solution right into the project, though, kind okay. of knowing in advance. Um, again, we put that dimmer switch on there. We'll be able to control those lights to any level. Okay. That's wonderful. Um, I all think right. that's it on building. I believe we're going to talk about the traffic study next. That's great, Mark. Thank you so much, um, Rick. Good evening, uh, Rick Bryant. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Rick Bryant with Stantec out of Northampton. Uh, I actually live in Amherst and try to commute by bicycle when I can. So I ride by this site several times a week. Uh, we were asked to investigate the traffic implications of this proposal. And based on our findings, the team decided I only get one slide. Um, <laughs> traffic impacts are, are fairly nominal for this type of use. And I'll get into the numbers a bit. Um, and from a safety perspective, we didn't see any issues at the site. Uh, but we did our, the traditional uh, scope of work and trying to establish existing conditions. We uh, put a hose out on the road in front of the site to count cars. We do. Um, we isolate the peak hours. The afternoon peak was the busiest hour of the day, about a little over 700 trips in an hour. Uh, the morning was much lighter, uh, more like 400 trips in the, the hour. Uh, we measured vehicle speeds uh, along with counting the cars, the um, 85th percentile speed, which we're most interested in the traffic world, uh, was about 40 miles per hour in each direction. Uh, we then did a forecast of the amount of traffic we expect the project to generate. Um, we did this by looking at the Institute of Transportation Engineers Trip Generation Manual. You've probably heard of that. Like data from across the country at existing uses, relates the vehicle trips at the facilities to the number of storage units. And when we apply those numbers, um, we see a little over 100 trips per day for this facility, which is basically you know, 50 customers a day coming and going. Um, when, when you look at that volume and add it to what's on the street, it's, it's really less than a 1% increase. It's, it's not an increase you'd notice if you're sitting at the site, um, it'd be like trying to know that today's Tuesday instead of Wednesday by watching the cars go by. It, it, it is not a significant increase in terms of traffic operations. Um, we, uh, again, we use IT estimates. I've worked on probably a dozen of these type facilities um, over the past couple of decades, I'd say. And on several of these, we've gone back and done post-construction traffic counts to see if our forecasts were any good. And it, generally, we're, we're landing on target, target every time with the IT numbers. Um, yeah, we did get some data for the Mill Valley road site. Uh, those numbers are a bit lower. We're trying to take the conservative approach and see the industry standards that are, tell us, as I say, about 50 customers a day. Uh, five customers in any one hour would be kind of the maximum. Uh, from a safety perspective, we always want to know that people can get in and out of the driveway safely. That's a function of how fast cars are going down the, down the street past the site and how far one can see when trying to pull out of the driveway. Uh, for the 40 mile, mile per hour speed we observed, uh, one wants to be able to see at least 305 feet. This is a straight level section of roadway. You can see well over 500 feet. Um, so we conclude that you can get safe access to the site and that the traffic increases uh, given the nature of the land use are, are very nominal and won't have a noticeable impact on area operations. Thank you. What, typically, when are the peak hours for something like this? It, it, you, you really have to look for them because there's so little traffic, um, but the evening commuter peak is probably the busiest. And that probably relates more to uh, drive-by uh, customers. Maybe you're looking to rent a unit and you want to check out what's available and you're already driving by the site. So you pull in and, and talk to someone and, and see what you can arrange. Um, but the, the demands are generally spread out over the course of the day and tend to get a little busier on the weekends, but you know, the weekends adjacent traffic on the street is, is pretty low. Okay. Thank you. All right, Rick, thank you very much.
Um, I'm going to wrap up the presentation with the next few slides. Um, talk briefly about landscaping. Now, this was designed by Snow and Sons Landscaping. I don't believe we have a representative from them here tonight, so I'll do my best to bring out my green thumb. Um, that we do have in the 15 foot buffer a variety of plants at the southern property line along uh, the center island. And as far north as we can go, um, there, due to the wetland, the 35 foot no disturb buffer really is the limit of our disturbance. So we can't go further north with plantings without being in violation of the Conservation Commission's no disturb zone. So we stop at the 35 foot line here. Uh, additionally, you can see there's quite a number of um, uh, plants through here, the, the larger ones, the trees, we have deciduous trees um, and a coniferous tree. Overall, it's 15 different species of flowers and trees and shrubs with uh, 164 perennials being installed. Uh, so a pretty good number plus areas of uh, annuals. So color that will be put in uh, right up at the street, you know, low, low elevation won't be in the way of uh, sight lines, you know, th the thinking tulips, et cetera. Um, so that, that's going to really bring a lot of life to this well-designed uh, architectural facility. Moving on, um, talk briefly about Berkshire Design. Um, we got an update letter from them today. Uh, the short answer is we're good. Um, and we, we've ad addressed all of their comments. The, <clears throat> there are key, a few key points that they did make in their letter, which I, I do want to speak to. Um, one is Berkshire Design did talk about uh, the farmland preservation bylaw and our, our interpretation is, is their perspective wasn't quite right because the farmland preservation applies to North Maple Street, Route 9 and Mill Valley Road. And this facility is not on any of those streets. So with South Maple not being listed within the district, uh, that point wouldn't apply that they brought up. Uh, Berkshire Design also talked about door elevations um, and since that letter that we received on August 2nd, um, uh, there was a consideration of how we would adjust that if we would do it internal to the foundation. Uh, a few days ago, it was decided it was way better to make the changes outside. Um, so I've been able to adjust uh, a few of the doors, no problem. And I'll actually bring up an image of that because it's a slight change to what the original application was. Um, and as was in Berkshire Designs letter and a series of emails from this afternoon, which maybe you've had an opportunity to review or may, maybe not, um, but they, they do say that the front entrance, we're, we're looking to make that adjustment by bringing up the parking lot grade, and that is, is doable. We believe it's doable. Berkshire Design believes it's doable. It wouldn't change impervious area or parking or, or any of the other site plan entities. It's just a, a change in grading. And the final thing that they brought up that I want to speak to uh, because it does have to do with the stormwater management system and uh, the western basin, which um, actually let me pull this site plan up so you can see specifically. Uh, this basin over here has an emergency overflow. So if there's some type of system failure, a pipe breaks, water can't get out through the normal channel, it's designed to have a, an emergency overtopping spot, one place to put it, and that's on the north side which would then direct it into this 24 foot wide driveway. And they just wanted to make sure that that seemed reasonable. So I did go back and run through a few calculations and the resultant of which is that the, um, if I come up here, that we would get less than three quarter inches of water uh, flowing at about three feet per second down this opening. Um, so that's a, a strolling walking pace. And if we're talking about, and this is for the hundred year storm. So if we have a hundred year storm out, uh, three quarter inches of water is, is not gonna be any kind of uh, significant event compared to what's going on all around. So in terms of accessibility and safety, we don't have any impediments in the worst case scenario of the emergency system, uh, the basin failing and the emergency system being utilized. I, there were a couple minor updates that I want to bring from our original application. Um, so I talked about already Berkshire design, talked about elevations. The rear of the building in this striped area used to have one contiguous concrete sidewalk. Um, and what we decided is it's better if we just work with a concrete ramp here and a concrete pad here at the two doors. These are not entrances to the building. They're, they're only egresses. Uh, and then we would just stripe the pavement all along the building, no change to the parking layout. Additionally, 
the original submittal did indicate it was a chain link fence that we were looking for. It, um, and for the, the bulk of the fence around the sides and the back, that is true, but the architect has selected a decorative uh, double top rail fencing for the front of the building. So everything you would see from the street and a portion of the southern, uh, portion of the southern fence near the, nearest the road would also uh, have this upgrade in terms of aesthetics. Um, and of course the application did uh, talk about a couple, what I'm calling waivers, knowing that the, the word variance is, is more appropriate in some case. Uh, the last one we already talked about, so we won't get into that, um, but we, I do wanna talk about the, um, the, the bylaws that reflect on, uh, would potentially influence our internal signs. So bylaws 7464 and 761 both talk about, you can't have signs in a side yard or within 20 feet of a front lot line. And uh, again, I'll pull up the, the site plan general image here and zoom in a little bit to, to demonstrate. Oops. Um, and I can bring up the engineering plan that shows all the signs, but at right at the front lot lines, this being an exit only, we have exit only signs here. Well, of course, that's within 20 feet of the front lot line. Uh, exit only do not enter signs are at these points. Here it says enter. So these are also within 20 feet of the lot line. We also have along the pavement at various locations, uh, some one-way signs that are within 20 feet of the side lot line because they're they're on the south side of the pavement, which is obviously within 20 feet of that lot line. So for these uh, internal guidance direction signs, uh, we, we are requesting if it is <laughs> at all possible here, of course, that- direct, uh, direct, Just a minute, Bucky. Yes, sir. Direct channel signs like that are fine. Ah, all right. Then I'll stop talking at that point. Um, okay. And, the only and, signs we're really concerned with in the front side, the front lot, is your main ideal mover storage sign. The business sign, yes. Okay. Uh, all right. In which case, but you can strike that request, I suppose, because it is a moot point. Thank you for clarifying that. And... Um, <clears throat> I already mentioned earlier in the presentation, we, I'm working with the Conservation Commission and the Board of Health now to, to get the, the designs for those applications done. Of course, they'll, they'll wanna see the, the site plan and see what's actually gonna be built. Every board wants every other board to make the decision first is my experience, but uh, we, we are running these concurrently. And um, if there are any concerns about those applications, you know, I'm, I'd love to talk about them at this meeting as well. Um, and, and that wraps up the, the review of the overall project. So we're happy to answer your questions and we very much appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you. Mike's, ba Mike's bank enabled, are you still on? Yes, I am. You are. H have you seen the site? Do you have any concern with the layout or, or, or for flow for fire trucks or otherwise? Uh, this is, uh, I had a discussion with Bill today. This is, I did receive a set of full plans today so I can, dig in a little bit more. Um, I had received an email from, from Bucky, uh, I think towards the end of July, we were talking about potentially meeting up. Um, the only concern I have or question I have actually is not really a concern is, uh, are you intending on using propane on site? And if you are, um, that tends to impact where you put it um, for your site plan. If you have, if you're planning on putting it above ground or below ground, I don't know what you're going to be using for your heating. Mark, can you answer that question? Um, I, I don't believe there's uh, propane on site. How are you going to be heating the place? Um, we we're in discussion with the HVAC contractor. Uh, we haven't come to a conclusion on that, but uh, the general consensus right now is with heat pumps. So it'll be electrically heated. Right. Okay. What about the coldest days of winter? Heat pumps don't work when it's that cold out. Yes, they do. Well, fortunately, with um, climate controlled storage, we're not keeping the building at uh, 70 degrees. We have a temperature range, uh, usually in contract from as low as 50 to as as high as 80 degrees. So okay. it's not the normal parameters of a standard building. Okay. Well, but any, just be aware of the fire chief's concern about propane if you, that's what is the backup. That's fine. 
Okay. And right. Jim, I, I will say, um, having just built my own house and put in a, a heat pump system in it as well, the, the newer technologies will go down to roughly 30 below Fahrenheit. So that normally does cover our winter conditions. Not all of them do, but it is definitely a, an available technology that is reasonably priced. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, just, um, let's see. Plantings. I'm not a plant expert, so I, I, from what you showed, I couldn't determine... Are all the plantings native relative to the area? I will have to get back to you on that specific question. And um, we don't require it, but we highly encourage native species. All right. Um, I, I don't think anybody would have difficulty with native species um, okay. if, if there's a, an imbalance here. Okay. A general comment. The building is absolutely gorgeous. Is this your typical storage building? This is, this is definitely a, uh, what we, we call a Class A building. Uh, storage ranges from Class A, Class B, Class C. Um, this is uh, by far really one of the nicest buildings we've designed. Well, by, by far, this is going to be one of the nicest buildings in the whole area compared to the malls and everything else around there. It's going to be, it's almost going to be out of place. <laughs> I wish it was closer to Route 9. <laughs> I'm going to want to rent a storage space as an office. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that is just, when I saw that, I mean, I, I, until I saw the full rendering, I was like, this building is, wow. My, my kudos to the Banuses for really making it look gorgeous. Yeah. Mr. Banus, Mr. Banus's mother used to pick cucumbers for us. So, uh, He's come a long way, and for that matter, so have I. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Are there anybody else with comments? I had a question for Chief Mike. Do is there any concern about the security fence? Do you need like a like a Knox box or anything? Yeah. Again, uh, today's the first day I really received okay. the plans, but yeah, the um, there will be need to be some site of uh, sort of site access. And I'm sure we can work all that out as part of the, the building permit. And let's make it remind everyone that the planning board made this possible, even probable, more probable than possible when we change the uh, parking requirements for industrial use. There you go. <clears throat> well, that's, that's a good point. And that, the fact that uh, it's for industrial and industrial use. So uh, it does have its limitations. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this, it doesn't look like an industrial building, that's for sure. Yep. Um, anybody, anybody else on the board have comments? Yeah, I just wonder if we could go back. I did not, uh, you, you had made a comment about transfer of development rights. Oh, yeah. And that you disagreed with Bircher Design. Now, I'm not finding Bircher Design's position in the, um, yeah, but maybe I didn't download all of their uh, their letters. I, I, I don't quite understand why you would need transfer development rights. Well, I'm wondering if they don't have the uh, parking requirements. Is that what they're looking for? No, I no, don't we... believe that was it. Oh, well, maybe under the new zone, under, perhaps the they didn't have the new zoning bylaw. Well, right. yeah. Well, they did issue a second letter this afternoon, and when in my reply and saying, "Well, we're on South Maple, it doesn't apply," they accepted that as their comment. And um, yeah. I actually put my presentation together before I got that letter, uh, so yeah. I did want to address it. I'm well, pretty well, sure well, when we when we changed the parking in the industrial zone in the past, I sent it to Ideal. I mean, to yes, Ideal, to Berkshire Design, a few of the other ones to do our routine uh, reviews. You probably just didn't realize where it was. That's all. So, yeah, I, but I'm still not. I'm still not understanding why it was raised. W was there a request for? Did they think there would need to be a request for a reduction of parking, or some mm -hmm. other? Bucky, I'm happy to, if you want me to please Tom. take this. Yeah, sure. So, Bill, in your footnote three to your, your use table, you've got in the B&I districts, 
Um, any otherwise permitted use, blah, 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 um, of more than 75,000 cumulative square feet total gross floor area after such construction or exterior alteration on the same parcel of land, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Will also require a special permit on the farmland preservation bylaw with purchase of development rights as specified in section 17 for all floor area over 75,000 square feet. And so I think they, they took that and made a comment and said, oh, you're over 75,000 square feet, that applies. And then our response was, well, when you look at what the TDR, um, Farmland Preservation, says is, well, you also have to be on you know, North Maple, uh, Route 9, and then there was one other that Mill is Valley. escaping me now. Mill Valley. Mill Valley. Mill Valley. Yep. There you go. Uh, was it? Yeah, Mill Valley. So well, we, said, well, we don't belong in any of those. So we're not the receiving district. So then this 75,000 doesn't apply. And that's where they then said, okay. Okay. I know you, you had raised that. Um, okay. I guess my concern is if you're not in the receiving district, then you can't buy the development rights. Therefore you can't do it. And I would look at it and say it's not a prohibition on total gross floor area because we don't fall into that. Like we're we're not. It's not like we're under that farmland preservation generally. Like if we were in one of those districts and needed the extra parking, that's one thing. This seemed to me to be just if if you want to exceed and you're in that district, then here's what you do. But if you're outside, because it's going to be pretty limited what you can do, and you're 75,000 square feet. But you are so, in an I, you're in an industrial district. But not in an, right, but not an this, industrial. This doesn't talk in terms of receiving district. This talks in terms of an industrial district. Right, but then it references the farmland preservation. Right. And so in this part of the industrial district, you don't have that as an option. Huh? Yeah, I mean, and I so you I can't understand put up a building saying. of more than seventy five thousand cumulative square feet in this part of the industrial district. And I think I think I'm taking the opposite position that it doesn't apply because we're not in that receiving district. Not that we don't have the ability, but you're in an I district. It talks <laughs> about more than seventy five thousand in an I district, not in a receiving district. Also requires special permit under the farmland preservation bylaw. Now, I think that this was an omission. This should have been included because it was an industrial district. Um, but I think the way it's worded, it doesn't talk about receiving districts. It mm -hmm. talks about it. Now we can go back to perhaps the, uh, the prior version of the bylaw as a, uh, as a reference. And I'll see if what I can do there, because this was taken out of the, out of the farmland preservation section of the bylaw. Mm -hmm to move into that table of uses when, and this is, I'll say this is the first maybe glitch we've come across, but. Um, Jim, do you think the 2013 zone book was the most recent? Yeah, that looks like the old. I'm looking myself right now.
I'm not actually seeing where that came from. 3.6, the old regulation, 3.6.2.1. Three. That references section 6.2 regarding a special permit. Okay, I see. And then TDR section 16, right? 17. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was an omission. Uh, the South Maple Street was an omission, yes. Right. But, um, because it clearly meant to include the land on, Nor on Mill Valley Road, but it missed that little bit of industrial land that, frontage that has frontage on South Maple Street. Yeah. So, see a couple of ways through this. Um, we do have a special town meeting coming up in October. I think we're still within the time to uh, put an article on to add South Maple Street. Uh, alternately, we could ask for an opinion of town council as to how they feel about Mr. Reedy's argument that if it's not in a receiving district, it's exempt. Um, I, think I suppose a third is a variance bill. I guess that would be, you know, ahead of town meeting. Yes. I know yep. that Brent is looking for some, some certainty. Um, and, and I guess maybe for our knowledge. So if we were to either include this, include South Maple as one of the receiving districts um, or get a variance to exceed 75,000 square feet. Uh, what is, what is the TDR rate? And um, that's what I'm looking right need, now. How much would we need to buy? I guess. Cause I don't think we don't need anything for parking, obviously. And as I read TDR, it's, I think it's like 2000, extra square feet of commercial or industrial plus a, a, some parking set off plus a reduction in parking of 20 spaces. But that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't do anything for us. Right. We're addressing building size, not parking. Correct. Section 15. Crossed a new hurdle. Yeah, so you'd need roughly 10 and a half acres of TDR. And what's the per acre rate right now? 9,900. We'd have to ask them. That's an old rate. We'd have to find out what the newest rate is. So like, about $100,000 maybe, give or take? Yeah. Yeah. Part. Um, yeah, I, I doubt it's greatly different than that time. And Mike, I don't, I don't know what, the, what they've been paying lately for TDR. They have had a number of transfers in the last several years, but the Conservation Commission could give us that number. Okay. Is there any way that we could, uh, I'm, I'm trying to say horse trading or substitute, because there's going to be some work that's going to be required with the water line and perhaps... Uh, you could help the town put the water line in or maybe even extend it a little bit so it doesn't stop right at your property line because of the, uh, the sclerosis in the pipe there. Or is that that's out of bounds? 
I'm always well, up for a horse trade. It, it, it's a great idea, but I think it might be out of the scope of what we could do. It, it so, may, may if we went for a variance, variance though, I, I would love it if we could. Yeah, I mean, if we went for a you variance, know, I think we would say, hey, listen, we would like, so like right now, South Maple is not included as part of TDR. So we would go to the zoning board and petition them for an increase from 75,000 gross square feet, which the town has taken the position. It's not allowed unless it's in the receiving district, which, you know, maybe we'd move simultaneously with a Koppelman and Page uh, opinion. But assuming that the town's position is correct, then we would go for a variance and we would say in exchange for the variance, what we would do is we would be willing to, you know, and I don't know, Bucky, if you have any idea of what the cost of what I'm about to promise would be, but, you know, <laughs> but I think Maybe that is a mechanism. Top of my head. That might be the mechanism to say, okay. yeah, sure, we can extend yeah. that pipe and then extend it for X amount, you know, longer because it's got to come to the site anyway. So I, I mean, I don't, and you know, Brent this can yell at me tomorrow if he wants, but at least I, I think it might be on the table. So yeah, it, it, as I look at the uh, farmland preservation bylaw, it, it the Footnote refers back to the preservation bylaw, but the preservation bylaw doesn't really address just raw square footage. So I do think that you know, between the town council opinion and a variance, because of ambiguity, uh, we're probably okay. I'm not trying to stop this. I'm just saying that um, yeah. the bylaw as it reads seems you know, certainly is lends itself to multiple interpretations. Yes. Yeah, and, and I, I think the plan, while the planning board can't do what Joe and Tom have suggested, a variance could do that with some horse trading. Because it's a variance, it, it kind of, I don't know the right word, is it, 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 it'll work around certain aspects of the zone bylaw. I like horse trading better than screwing the pooch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not unusual in developers. I remember talking to the Lowe's developers and the Home Depot developers. So well and Jimmy for, for Harbor Freight, remember with, with the signs, what we had agreed to do was take down that billboard once that lease expired. I mean, so it's right. and that was I think right. through the mechanism of a variance. Well the, the variance would be a lot faster than anything else through town meeting. <clears throat> the variance is basically a month away, whereas town meeting is at most, at least three months out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Before, well, we, before we adjourn the meeting, and this is probably to Tom Reedy, uh, I think once you meet with the water department, uh, you know, they were uncertain as to the date. You know, maybe 22, maybe 23, what about uh, this could hold you up for a long time uh, if, if it's 24. Uh, but perhaps you could say we would hook up to the existing line until the, what, the new water line came in. I, I don't know if that's possible at all. So I don't know at, how this, much at, is at this point, the DPW director has been back from, uh, from overseas for two days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but he's, they're, they're aware, they're aware that the I, the applicant I, is aware of the issue. Um, yeah, correct. And the reason you haven't been getting feedback okay. is that the guy in charge has not been there. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I, I did get some feedback from, well, the question is, <laughs> unless it comes from the, uh, I know. Okay. Unless it comes from the top, um, it o only Chris can bind the department. Yeah. The, 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 the water, the, the water issue is something that is out of our jurisdiction. Yep. Mr. That's Chair. something that, you know, the, the fire is. Mr. Spank and Abel, uh, what you call it? Water, DPW, sewer and such. We can make comments that you must do this. However, how they do it is up to those particular departments. Okay, so, I mean, obviously the presentation was very professional, well done, et cetera, et cetera. And if we're gonna have to make a decision, 
uh, we don't have to. We don't have to. We don't have to. I, I would recommend with the, with the. I mean, we got some concerns here. You don't. You don't need a decision tonight. Is that correct? Oh, that's. I think you can get a sentiment of the board that it, it's I mean, well received. We, we see no reason why we're going to turn this down. Correct. Okay. I mean, you you know, you except for the details that we've mentioned and your mind that can be addressed. You, I mean, even if, if, and if you don't have water, well, that's, that's, that's another topic. However, um, I would just kind of like to continue it for a month to give you a chance to look at a few of these to come back to us with what's going to happen so that we're not approving it with a whole bunch of conditions that we have to mention, and it'll be a little bit cleaner for everybody involved. I'll second that motion. Is that okay? So, yep. sure. To the 7th, yep. I think that's fine. You want to do no, the 7th or you want to do the 21st? It's up to you. I, I'd like the 7th. Bucky, like I don't know if that's, that's no, okay with you. We could do the 7th. Well, with, I with, think the holiday, the seventh. with the end of summer, with the holiday, uh, i suggest you do the second one is that 21st 21st that's uh the seventh is going to come up really fast and um i can't I, we can't speak for any of the other uh departments for their response okay. schedule and who the we're waiting for again you know, i know fire had a couple of comments but i thought i heard him say it could be addressed through building permit um, Fire, water, and um, signs, lighting, uh, signs. Mr. Chairman, could I yes. ask, a, ask a favor, please? I haven't had a chance to completely look at the plans. Okay. And uh, in speaking with Tommy, could I request that uh, DPW Fire uh, and the building commissioner get together? I My wife did drop off the plans with me, and uh, there are some just you know i like i said i haven't had a chance to go through them i got them today okay. completely let's so let's make it september 21st that way they have a chance to look at them and you know not everything they're going to come up with really will pertain to the zoning stuff but at least you'll have a better idea and if anything jumps out at them you'll know about it and have a chance to address it okay and then if we could maybe Mr. Dwyer, just to connect on that TDR piece so we know if we're going to need to move through a variance just because, you know, obviously we'd like to start moving in that direction as, as if that's the direction right. as soon so as we can, possible. We can talk on that. I, I'm thinking okay. it probably does make sense to do both the variance and the town council opinion because yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure the CBA is going to want to see what town council has to say. I, I, I would encourage you to apply for the ZBA to get that moving. You can okay. always cancel it if it doesn't happen, Tom. Okay. But you don't want to be delaying, waiting for one comment to get into the next one. Okay. I'll reach out to Andrew uh, probably tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So we, we have the fire, re fire, the public safety review, uh, the water issue, signs, and then the town council ver or slash variants, uh, sort of open items. So I'll make a motion to continue to 921. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Very attractive. Very excellent presentation. Yes. Excellent information. Thank you very much. Very well done. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ideal Movers, for your uh, the appearance of the building. It'll be like no other in town. We hope so. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless. Uh, what else have we got, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, I believe that is everything for tonight. I don't have anything else. I have nothing else. Anybody else have anything? Negative. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. Motion is, yeah, the hit, meeting is history. Thank you. And thank you. Excuse me, John.